call it having a lot of fun. And now it's time to actually move on to the next segment, which is the main reason why we're here. Don't forget, continue to comment below and share this video as you watch it right now. Take a minute and share it with your audience right now, and we'll wait for that. All right, I think you just did. And we have the amazing Jane for you guys, all the way from Nigeria. Let's say hello to Jane first. Hi, hey. Jane. <laughs> And she has the princess wave. I'm gonna have to learn to do that. <laughs> Let's do it, Amy. <laughs> Look at Amy, she's worse. <laughs> no, it's right, like this. Right. Oh, I like Jane's though. Jane's is like the princess, like queen after like royalty. <laughs> so Jane, you have been all over the international news media. I'm sure you've taken over the Nigerian airways, right? As far as news, but particularly even, which is more important, internationally worldwide. You've been on BBC. You've been on every platform anyone can think of. All the blogs have been talking about Jane because you've done something so amazing. But before we get into that, we're super honored and excited because this is where you belong. On the sister show, you are a sister. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about yourself, Jane. Thank you very much. My name is Jane Richard. I'm a graduate of um, Unam Diazuku University in, back in Nigeria, and I studied microbiology. I am also a makeup artist. I've been making up for about five years now, but I really became very consistent because of the lockdown situation. We are not able to go out, so I just used the, the period to um, improve my makeup skills. And that was Wait, did you just say you studied microbiology? Yes, I did. I said my <laughs> How fascinating is that? I'm listening to what she's studied and what she's doing currently and everything. And I'm just like, well done, girl. Well done, sister. <laughs> so you did microbiology. But my question yeah. is, now you're also a makeup artist. Is there yeah. any point prior to you going into university studies that you were interested in being a, a makeup artist? Um. Okay, for me, I can say I actually see makeup as an art. And then while I was growing up, I was really, really good with drawing, painting and all stuff. So um, I just decided to combine both the art and the makeup together. So I'm drawing on my face instead of using a paper this time or a paint. So instead of using a paint and paper, I'm using my lipstick, my um, foundation powder and what have you on my face. So that's what um, brought about the uh, makeup. But then for the microbiology aspect, I've also been a lover of science. Like, I, I, I feel like I'm also good with science. So I have it with science, I have it with art. So that's Where does your passion lie? Okay, my passion is mostly with art, definitely. Because mm -hmm. I enjoy doing it more. I'm just amazed. I'm actually speechless for the first time. And usually you guys know, I'm always like... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I'm speechless because I'm just like imagining the transition from microbiology and then thinking and knowing that you love something like art, like right? And then makeup. I mean, I, I'm just trying to imagine Ole or Dr. J going into something else that's not in their field, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not seeing the picture come out clearly for me yet. You know, being in signs, completely yeah. different, right? Into the makeup or beauty world. I mean, it's just fascinating. Yeah. We're going to get into all that conversation, but is there anything that you could tell our audience about yourself? Like um, I'm the first born child of my parents. Um, I have another sister just like you guys and three other brothers. Um, we live in Nigeria, Lagos, actually. And uh, by the way, speaking of Nigeria, our love and prayers goes out to all of uh, our Nigerian sisters and brothers everywhere around the world. Uh, particularly during this moment because of the end SARS that is going on. So our prayers and love goes out to you all. Yeah. You are amazing. And I just want to let you know that you're great and you're doing wonderful things. Um, I just want to acknowledge that before I even get into this. Um, I am a makeup artist like you, but I am not a microbiologist. That's not my fear. <laughs> you are an amazing person and you have amazing talent. I just wanted to know, how did you get started? Did you go to school for, uh, as a makeup artist? Like, what, what did you do? I know I, I never went to school to be a makeup artist. Um, it just, I was just self-taught, but I want to hear your story. How did you get started? Okay, I guess that actually makes the both of us because I also didn't go to school to learn makeup. I actually started on my own by practicing. I mean, it's just constant practice. I wasn't this good like I was a um, few years back, but then uh, the more I went on with it, the more I got better. Then I got to uh, do it professionally. You've been wow. doing it for how long? For five years right now, right? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So within that five years, before the pandemic hit, like 
who, were you doing it on yourself, your friends, your family? Like, what, what was that dynamic? Okay, before the um, the coronavirus situation, I do it on myself too. I do it on a few friends. I do it on, I go for jobs actually, make, um, bridal jobs, traditional marriage, um, white weddings and all of that, birthday shoots. But then I had other pending jobs that I tend to actually doing the um, pandemic. But I couldn't, I couldn't go for them because we were all on lockdown. So that was why I used, I seized that opportunity where I wasn't doing anything to learn something more, something more than the whole beauty, beauty makeup. So that was why I started um, learning how to um, actually paint because that's just almost like a special effect. I kind of paint to look like someone else. So um, that was how um, I, I started. That's before. really amazing that you went from a microbiologist to a makeup artist that goes around to hustle and actually make a little bit of money on that and then now you find an opportunity where there's a lockdown and you can't make money anymore doing that but that uh, you're very talented because you seize the opportunity of the lockdown I'm actually i'm this kind of person that once i'm not um, doing something or once i'm free i try to look at i try to look at things i can actually create it wasn't actually the makeup it could actually be maybe i try to learn how to um, make clothes using um, clothes materials it could be food you try to learn how to cook right if you, so if you were in the era of einstein you literally yeah. could have been working next to einstein because yeah. you, you are uh, an innovator actually probably i guess so. I'm trying to do something that's really rare so that was why I got a lot of attention during the lockdown. I mean, even people that weren't so busy with their phones because of their busy with work, they were, they were with their phones all day so that they can easily go online. Um, I got a lot of attention from people on social media when I started posting my work. People encouraged me to go on with it. I think that is a really, really impressive, Jane. And uh, I can't even say, well done, congratulations. I think the beauty of being multitasking like um like we said you could have been working next to albert einstein because you're an innovator and COVID came and you came up with so many great things now you spoke about um when you started doing work especially in your friends and stuff like that things went viral how how did like how did that happen how did that go uh, is it the viral in like whatsapp groups or like on youtube or instagram how did that go um, all i did actually was to post it on facebook because i belong to this uh, makeup artist group where um, different makeup artists post their work and then you have people um, go under the comments and rate how much or how good um, they are doing um so when i posted that particular picture that was the very first um, imitation makeup i did that was for, for our president president for high president of nigeria so i posted it and then in an hour ah, i think i'm getting um probably close to ten thousand likes so people were really really impressed it's not something it's not something common i mean people are used to the whole um, using makeup to look beautiful but right now i'm doing something extraordinary so i got really good attention and then the next day i'm waking up i already got calls from tv stations saying they want to interview me and then since then uh, the more i get more interviews the more uh, I, my, my followers on instagram grow so i i get i tend to get more viral as the day passes. what's your what's your instagram i'm gonna go ahead and follow you and everybody's gonna follow you right now okay my instagram handle is jonet underscore makeovers that's Jane. wonderful so expect more followers from the sister show crew <laughs> I'm yeah. definitely going to follow you also on Instagram and I'm going to make sure that everybody in the movie follows you. I uh, just wanted to find out, so what are some of the other uh, personalities or actually big um, time acts that you did um, during this time of COVID? President Buhari, like, like I said, that was my first ever. Then I've done David Doe, who's a musician. I've done Siwa Savage, Nigerian musicians. I've done... Um, um, I don't know if you know Pete Adoshi, he's a Nigerian actor. And then the first international celebrity that I did was that of Pete, Charlie Bosman and a few others. I love the video. I love Tiwa. I love like everybody. I think I, I think like I love Inamabia, but my soul is like in Nigeria. Somewhere there. <laughs> yeah, the oh. Bolivians are coming for you, Helena. <laughs> <laughs> but we all family, we all global citizens, like you always say. But you did Eddie Murphy too, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I did that movie. Yeah. That was a great one. So, so who's the next one that you plan on doing? I'm guessing I would try to do Tyler Perry, um, but the um, it's normal look, and then the Medea look. So Medea? Yeah. You gonna do Medea? Yeah. Just, just make sure you have the books too. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to try. 
So we're gonna actually insert the Tyler Perry that you just did. Our audience can watch it right now. Tyler Perry, and let's make this one go viral too. So let's all cross our fingers the African way. Let's all cross our fingers. Oh, she did Wakanda on him. <laughs> comment below and share this video take a moment right now and share this video we'll wait for you to do that and i think he just did so thank you and we'll continue this conversation with the amazing jane okay jane i know it's fun when you have your work go viral um and you get all the acknowledgement that you're getting which you quite deserve right mm -hmm. but before i actually get into that are you still practicing uh your microbiology that you did in school so actually i actually graduated from school last year so i've not been able to really lay my hands on much so i'm still um i'm just i'm just doing this kind of makeup for now do you think you will get into microbiology full time or are you just trying to concentrate on makeup for now um, for me i'm definitely going to go with the makeup because i have more passion keyword is passion right there i love that the passion is what drives which i am not telling you not to practice uh, microbiology but what i'm saying is you just have to follow your passion whatever your passion is i do actually have a friend that i work with and she actually has a law degree and was actually had a really big law firm but she was not passionate about it and she had to leave and get back into the makeup field um, and you could be successful at whatever you do. You just have to make sure you're passionate about it and you just put your 100%, which I know that you're doing right now. But, you know, not to preach you, what is your ultimate goal from this whole thing? Uh, what do you want to achieve? I, you know, that I think that's very important for, for you. It's, it's all about money. Let's just be realistic. <laughs> you don't listen to Becky over here. She's going to corrupt you. <laughs> but the, the, the ultimate goal in life is to be successful. And however you define that success is up to you. How I define success is for me to actually have, you know, financial gains. The, yeah. the point is very important for me but what, what is your goal okay actually um i've gotten a few calls from movie producers i mean people working with nollywood industries so i hopefully definitely i, I hope that i'll be able to be working with them pretty soon just that because of the whole lockdown situation people are not really free to move about and then uh, probably they've not started the uh, yeah, production exactly uh, so i'm sure definitely that i'll get to work with them and aside that i would also love to um, own my own makeup academy where i would also be able to teach people that want to um, learn this kind of work or people that have passion for art so what you do right now is more of like a, a transformation right if we may call it do you know how to do special if special effects or are you going to learn how to do special effects also actually i know how to do because I, I don't like special effects i don't <laughs> i don't no. i have put all of them on my page if you go down you will see some really scary uh, stuff uh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah special effects is it's kind of scary, but it seems like it's probably like a whole lot of fun to dive into that world. Yeah. As an artist, right? You just go mm -hmm. in yes. crazy. If you know, uh, I used to be in the industry and every time that we were on set, you could be on the chair for hours, literally yeah. for hours, right? Yeah. When you're done with filming, you take two hours to take everything out and then you have to come back the next day to do it again. I mean, it's just crazy. But definitely you're going to be making money out of it. So you're just going to do it. What how I like <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you meet your sister over here talking about the point. Very impressive, Jane. You, I, I, I just heard you a few minutes ago talk about how you want to open an educational uh, platform, which is really good because uh, there are a lot of kids that will probably learn from you as well. But do you have any goals in terms like going international to try to get your work done outside of uh, Africa or even Nigeria per se? Yes, I've actually thought about it and that's why I mentioned earlier that I would, I would love to do um, an imitation makeup of, of Tyler Perry next and hopefully I would get get the I would get the, inter the attention of um, international bloggers and I know that if they keep posting my work, he might see it and then from there I'll just keep doing a lot of international places. I'm going to say, and then when you, I'm not going to say if, because it's going to happen, we'll call it into existence. And when you go into Tyler Perry's production crew as one of his uh, makeup artists or special effects artists, right? To be able to go back to even give more into, especially the school that you say that you want to 
hopefully open up in Africa to teach kids there. Yes, definitely. I would still love to do that. I mean, it doesn't just end yeah. with doing an invitation makeup yeah. as it is. I would also love to extend my knowledge to pick up school. Even if I can't um, travel down to organize a physical class, I could also hold an online yes. class. A lot of people are willing to learn. A lot of people appreciate this work a lot. So definitely, I would also love to um, help them in one or two ways. Green is amazing. And of course, the fact that you want to go out there and work with international uh, production companies. But the beauty that you also have and the beauty that Nigeria has, has um, one, I think the third biggest movie industry, if not in the world, that is Nollywood, which has got so much to give. And the beautiful thing about it is the fact that it has authenticity and just the pride of Africa. And so, big ups, and I hope to see you um, in my wedding with the video, which is in my dreams. But, uh, <laughs> In my okay, Jane, now we're gonna get personal, okay? Come on, shake it up a little bit. Just shake it up. Nobody asks this in America, but I'm going to ask because we're Africans, we're sisters, right? Um, yeah. how, how old are you? I'm 23 years old. Wow, wow you're so young. <laughs> you know, I kind of figured, but I wasn't so sure because, you know, I'm black on fat, like they said, especially the African black. <laughs> You know, so, but I wasn't sure, but wow, 23. I, I knew she was young, but because of her maturity and her talent, I was giving her at least like a 28, not because of her looks, but just because of what she's done. I just yeah. think, yeah, and how mature she is. But that's, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what I was doing at 23. Uh, d definitely not uh, checking uh, uh, my list like that. That's, that's not what I was doing. <laughs> but, but, but please like stay on that path. It's, it's, it's beautiful because when you start off your career at a very young age, um, I mean, you have a sense of direction well, that you're so focused at your age. At 23, I was, oh well. <laughs> Party, you know. So Amy, what were you doing at 23? Hello, do you really want to know? <laughs> what were you doing, Amy, at 23, actually? I, I'm curious now. I want to know. I'm so That's when she was trying to fall in love with someone that she now <laughs> thinks it was the biggest mistake. And she, <laughs> yes. And that's when my mom was telling her to go to school and focus on herself. Mm -hmm. Amy, so tell us, what were you doing? That's Jay's version of this you gave, story. You gave love a chance at 23. It's okay. Um, so when did, that, when did that love end, though? In the gutter. <laughs> Helena, Helena, <laughs> you you are supposed to be the nice sister. <laughs> Doctor, what were you doing at twenty three? I'm not like Amy. I was very serious. At twenty three, I was in college. I was I'm I'm just like uh, Jane. Helena, you try to dodge this question. What were you doing at twenty three, Helena? I think let's give Juka a chance and then. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Helena, what were you doing at twenty three? If you're watching. Comment below, let us know what were you doing at 23? Hmm, let's see, what was Auntie Chikolora and Mary and all of them doing, Utan? What were you guys doing at 23? Let us know below. What were you doing, Helena? Answer that one. I think Amy and I, and we're both 23, would have been in the same WhatsApp group. <laughs> <laughs> Giving each other the same instruction. Hallelujah. Well, the good news is you guys have managed to turn your lives around. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being 23 and making mistakes, right? I just I just hope and pray that you learn from those mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes at 23. Juka, you're not trying to, you're not going to run away from the question. What were you doing at 23? I actually think that I, I was very focused very earlier on. Don't you think, Jay? Mm. Yeah, she, I, no, I was. In a, in a different way, she was very focused. Uh, she knew she wanted to go into the industry of modeling and stuff. The only thing was like, when Juka thinks she can sing, even if she sucks, she still thinks she can sing. Like, but the, the good thing is she ended up doing modeling, which she was really great at. And I'm glad that she was good at it. And she did a lot of work, actually. Like how many uh, commercials? Yeah, I don't want to be sound like a brag thing, but okay. Like I've done 20 national commercials that showed all over the United States, like MasterCard, American Express, Axe Builder, and Saab, Dell commercial, like you name it. I've it was good. It was, it was, it was really good. But that's what I'm saying. I was really focused at a very early age. And then it's so funny because they thought just like Jane, I was 23. I, most people thought I was younger. So they would cast in me for like teenage stuff, but I was older. So maybe that's why I was getting them because I was more mature in my head than the teenagers. I don't know. I was still getting booked at 23. Right. But what I, what the biggest mistake I did, I don't think the love thing, uh, uh 
Helena, it's, it was the mistake. Okay, we that's a separate WhatsApp group that we were on, right? But the one of the biggest mistakes I did really was having no management for my money. Like I was getting paid like in bulk, and I would just like waste the money. I'll just do some money. crazy stuff. So I had yeah. no management for money. I I was not focus on anything i was just trying to just leave it basically are you, are you saving your money actually yes i'm saving my money oh so, since you're 23 and mature and you save yeah. so are you dating or are you i don't know like is it complicated <laughs> are you trying to figure it out why do you guys want to corrupt this young girl you and amy go no, no, she no, is we, we, she we, is 23 we, she's she's 23 and we want to find out where she is so we can advise her but it's okay, Jane. Are you dating? Let me just put it out there. Okay. Yes, actually, I'm dating. Yeah. Ooh. So, are you in love? Or oh, are you in love? Love. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. Yes, I love my boyfriend. <laughs> oh, so, Jane, let me just say a few things. Most likely, at some point, it's not going to be the one long-lasting. I'm just saying, but it's possible. But, but maybe it's different also because you're in Africa. In the West, for sure, not, most likely. The person you're with at 23 is not going to be the person you're going to end up with. That's I mean, not true. LeBron, I, LeBron, I, I, LeBron James I, I, and his wife have been together since high school. Patrick Mahomes just got engaged and they're expecting a baby and they've been together since high school. You were dating yeah. the wrong people at 23. I, I'm Nancy. I'm, I mean, of course, there's exceptions to every rule, Amy. I'm not that dumb. But I'm just saying, most likely in the West, the answer is no. Because at 23, you are discovering yourself. You're discovering, you know, your passion, the things that you want to do in life. And so most of the time, you don't end up with the same guy. But in Africa, it might be a little bit different because people... Yeah, stop corrupting yeah, this but, little but, girl with all these talks. Let her be happy with her man. Okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay, I was gonna say, listen, Linda, but okay, listen, Jake. Listen, if if you like him and he likes you, he treats you nice. Go ahead, follow your passion and your dreams. Don't let any person or any man hinder you from following your dreams. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say, and I'll drop that mic. Is that fair enough, Doctor Jake? As long as yeah. you have a man in your life who 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 supports you, what you do and supports your career and encourages you and pushes you to be the best you are in life, that's the one that you want to be with for the rest of your life, right? You could meet that person in the next 10 years or that's the person that's right this second right now. But I say, yeah. go for it. Just make sure that it doesn't stop you from pursuing your dreams and be the better you. That's it. Period. Yeah. You know, you know what's right. amazing? Like when Amy gives advice about relationships, like she sounds so good. Like she makes so much sense. But then when it's time for her to make her own choices, it's like so messy. That's what I don't understand. What's wrong? Because the men I date are dumb. <laughs> what does that say about you, Amy? I'm naive. Well, at least you're acknowledging that's where it starts, right? We're going to move on to the more serious conversation with Jane quickly and um, so that we could wrap this segment up. We're just really proud of you. And it's so funny, like you, what's your sign, Jane? Because you seem like kind of Very serious. Calm. What's your astrology? I'm Gemini, May 28th. Okay, so maybe today is the other I'm twin. That's I'm a Taurus. No, no, wait, hold on. It's not about you, Amy, always. <laughs> We're talking about the Gemini here. No, so, but... No, but I was going to say, maybe it's because... Do you feel like sometimes you wake up on this side of the bed or that side of the bed? Like, is the twin. Sometimes you're very quiet and reserved. Sometimes you're very light. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But I feel like it happens to everybody. People just have their maybe different sides. No, that's just, just you. you the Gemini here. <laughs> you know, Jane, you know how it is in our, in, in our societies, right? You are born and raised in Africa and actually still living in Africa. And I believe your parents are also born and raised in Africa and they have the same values, just like a lot of our parents have. How are they taking it? You actually studied microbiology and, and diverted a path and saying, I want to be a makeup artist and this is what I want to do. We know in a, in a, in a normal African household, that's not going to fly. <laughs> 
okay while i was actually still in the university i told you i've been making up for five years now so i mean when i go for jobs i get paid obviously and i use that money to kind of like support myself I mean, I don't have to always depend on my parents for every damn thing that I need. And so they were really proud of me that at least I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, um, I'm not um, entirely dependent on them. Seeing where it has brought me now, they are even encouraging me more. Like right now, as I speak to you, I'm actually supposed to be making dinner for them. But they're like, oh, she's in and it's we just sleep her, let her be. So it, it's going to be my pockets and not, they really support me. So anyway. oh, that's amazing. And I, I was just going to add here, what I feel, what I think though, don't kill me African parents, but I'm just keeping it real, right? Once once they see that the art, there's some mula, there's some coins attached to the art, they actually don't have a problem with it. Now, the only time that they will have a problem with it is when there's no mula or the coin is not attached to the art. Then they seem to have a problem. I don't know why. Maybe Jay, you can ask I don't. I don't think it's... Um... It's the money itself. They want to make sure you can take care of yourself because they won't be here forever. And right. for you to go into a career that you just there and painting and painting, painting like if I were to go say I'm going to stop working and go paint when I know I can't really <laughs> paint and then I can't even pay my bills and I keep asking for money from my parents. At some point they're going to say, wait a minute we cannot take care of you from childhood till now and you're supposed to be taking care of yourself and you want to depend on us for the rest of your life when you i think that's where it comes from the world is is evolving and people are now getting more aware because especially with times of social media our know, parents luckily now are actually getting away from are starting to get away from that idea of you know just doing what we want you to do and you know letting you follow your passion and i think right. we really try and build on it and, mm -hmm. and once they realize that you know this is what you want this is what you love and you're actually doing it and you're actually doing a great job and you're making you're impacting your life and other people's life i think they start actually letting you be yourself and just mm -hmm. take it to the next level and i think that's what you do so you've basically set an example and it and it basically just start with one person in the community right so you have set the example, she took time, she went to school, she got educated, she has a degree. So you always have something to fall back on, okay? But not just rely solely on just, you know, thinking you could be a makeup artist, thinking you could be successful. If anything happens and you just think it's not gonna work, you st still have something to, to, to yeah. go back on. Right. right now, I think we're in a generation where literally it's a celebration because you can literally be whoever you wanna be. And again, big ups um, to Jane and so many other innovators and black child innovators and African innovators out there that are pursuing their dreams because the platforms are there and we are literally just here to make use of what we have. Yeah, and also big up to her parents for allowing and yeah. giving her the, the freedom to actually uh, follow and pursue her dreams. Especially, like we yeah. said, it's not easy. In Africa, if we know the reality, unless your parents are formally educated or they've been exposed very well to the West, right? If it's in Africa, normally, particularly even the villages, but luckily she's in the city, but this is a problem across the board in Africa, most countries. Your parents, if you're a woman or a girl, there are certain expectations that they have on you, right? There's certain expectations for career choices for you to follow that path and not go into art. They are starting to open up. I think that's the, what we need to happen more of in Africa, so that as we as we always say, so there's more diversity in in what we can do as Africans because that's what's going to make for a better and, and a growing economy. Really, um, I feel um, down here in Africa, Nigeria, as I've witnessed. Um, parents feel like because obviously they are older than you and then they give birth to you like they are your parents so they feel like they know what's better for you i mean a, a child of 10 years could wake up one morning and tell his parents that oh mom or dad i want to become a musician and they're like you're too young to make such decision like are you sure you can really handle this and then they feel like no we should be the one to choose one because they are using their money to send you to school. So, so they feel like since it's their money, you should or you must do what they want you to do. But I think um, it shouldn't be like that. You should always listen to what your children love. I mean, it's all about passion. If you're doing something you don't have passion for, you would not, I mean, you might, you might, you might excel actually, but then you don't have joy. You might be depressed. I mean, 
a lot of things might happen. When you turn your hobby to work, then you don't have to work at all because you're actually enjoying whatever you're doing. And then you're making cool cash um, mm-hmm. together. Parents should always encourage their children, to always push their children to go for their dreams and support them. Too. Well, you can say it better. And I hope that all the parents out there are really listening to what you are saying, Jay. Um, you have been an inspiration. We are all very proud of you and we couldn't be more prouder of you as a young, just 23, and all the things that you've already said here on the show and the direction that you have that is so clear of what you want, even to the extent of wanting to open a school to teach and give back at this age is just remarkable. So therefore we say thank you and keep on keeping on and you shall get there by the grace of God. If there's anything possible that I can do to help and to support you. I don't think I can help you anymore because you have, you have, you have, you know, you've hit the, the sky space right now. But if there's anything I can do to support your career and just be there and just have someone to talk to, I'll be more than happy to do that with you because you are a sister now. All right, so Jane, before you leave, can you please um, give us, that is your social media handles, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, yeah, so that we can get people to follow well, you. You could just type in Jeremy Chan. Yeah, Jeremy Chan and just search. And don't forget, keep sharing these videos as you watch us, share it on your social media walls. And, and of course, follow Jane, look her up. It's simple, Jane Richard, and I'm sure you'll find her everywhere on social media because she is that much of a celebrity right now. So on that note, let's say goodbye to Jane. Thank you so much, Jane. We love you so much. Thank you. Bye, Bye, Jane. If you guys notice Jane on high, she said this. And on goodbye, she said this. Girls, let's step up, sisters. We always go like this. Now we're going to go like this. Bye, girls. Now we're going to go.